This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the 11th chapter of our monthly Cybersecure Canada webinar series. Today's topic is celebrating our certification bodies. So we just wanted to uh, celebrate everything they do to help Canadian organizations get um, certified under Cybersecure Canada and, you know, have them present on each of their specific offerings in this space and answer any questions about the certification process uh, near the end. So my name is Brendan Dumphy and I am the Director of Trust Compliance Program at CyberMD. And um, as always, I will be your host today. Um, for any new participants joining today, I will do a brief overview of Cybersecure Canada and then I will turn the presentation over to our guest speakers uh, who will present on their specific offerings. This webinar is recorded. Uh, participants are welcome to ask questions, uh, preferably via the chat box, and we will address questions at the end of the presentation, um, time permitting, of course. Uh, any questions that are not addressed can be asked via email to info at cybernb.ca, or uh, you can contact one of the respective uh, certification bodies and their contact information will be shared on the last slide. After today's presentation, uh, I will draw a name from one of the participants and that participant will receive a uh, $50 gift card just for uh, joining today. So let's get started. So first of all, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Cyber NB and the trust compliance programs and, and why you're talking to, uh, or why you're hearing from me. Um, the focus of CyberMB's Trust Compliance Program is to help organizations of all sizes operate safely in the digital economy. As you can imagine, there's a lot of threats out there. Um, they just seem to keep coming and uh, organizations need to know how to protect themselves and you know how to do so without breaking the bank. Um, Canadian businesses must ensure their systems, operational processes and data are secure. And this is especially true for the small and medium-sized organizations, which often lack the resources that large organizations have to continually monitor threats and put in the required or recommended uh, uh, compliance uh, practices. Uh, CyberMB also connects uh, businesses with accreditation bodies and certification bodies so that they can mitigate the risk and obtain required certifications. So some of our uh, initiatives include liaising with national and international certification bodies, helping businesses obtain required certification accreditation, and promoting best practices in assessing vulnerabilities and threats. And of course, expanding market opportunities to compete in supply chains that require uh, certification or accreditation, uh, like the CMMC program out of the United States. So what is Cybersecure Canada? Well, it is a voluntary cybersecurity certification program that was developed by the federal government of Canada. It was designed with the following goals in mind, to improve Canada's small and medium organizations cybersecurity baseline, to raise awareness and educate all Canadians about cybersecurity, and increase consumer confidence in the digital economy of Canada. It is based on 13 control areas found in the baseline cybersecurity controls for small and medium organizations that are shown here on the screen. For example, secure mobility. So you make sure your mobile phones, laptops, uh, any portable uh, devices are secured uh, and up to, up to current patch levels in order to protect them. And enable security software, ensure your devices are protected from malicious code with anti-malware solutions. Uh, and of course, um, there's established for basic perimeter defenses, automatically patch operating systems. I won't go into much detail on each control today. This is just gonna be a high level overview. And uh, so let's talk about how you can get started. So getting started is very easy. You just navigate to our website, uh, cybernv.ca forward slash trust and compliance and select the get started button under Cybersecure Canada. This will take you to our secure online portal. And here you would select the register button, complete a form uh, detailing your uh, organization's uh, information and then register for Cybersecure Canada certification. And the best part is the portal is now free to access. So 
Um, there, it used to cost $350 Canadian plus tax. Now we are offering access to the portal for free of charge. So to register to the portal for free, all you have to do is enter the discount code S, sorry, CSC2021 to receive a 100% discount off of registration as shown on the screen here. So when processing the certification in the portal, you'll be presented with a series of statements. We refer to them as statements due to by selecting the implemented radio button shown on the screen here. You're indicating that for statement 11, the organization shall consider purchasing a cybersecurity insurance policy that includes coverage for incidents of uh, incident response and recovery activities or provide the rationale for not purchasing one. And then below, you'll see there is a required evidence section. Now, this would be where you would actually uh, provide the evidence to attest to the statement that you that you would click implemented above. And uh, for this particular statement that covers baseline control 1.3, um, it's asking for your uh, proof of proof of purchase for uh, in cyber insurance or the rationale for not purchasing insurance. So in this case. It just says cyber insurance policy certificate attached, and you can see there's an attachment there, and that should suffice for statement 11. Now, there has been quite a shift in cyber insurance uh, in the last, uh, well, since the outbreak of COVID, technically. So in 2020 and uh, so far in 2021, um, we've heard uh, insurers stating that the cyber insurance claims rate has gone up as high as 600%. So some insurance have discontinued coverage for ransom payouts, some have raised deductibles, some have made it so difficult to for the underwriting process that some organizations are unable to, to get cyber insurance. Um, uh, like, they're, like some have implemented what they call a zero tolerance for poor risks. So one way to ensure your organization is is eligible for cyber insurance and maintains eligibility uh, would be to uh, achieve and maintain cybersecurity certification. This would demonstrate to your insurer that your organization's cyber hygiene is reviewed by a third party um, on a regular basis in, in order to make sure that uh, they, they classify you as a low risk. And further to this topic, uh, Hub International has agreed to provide all organizations that process certification through our portal with a 10% discount off of standard cyber insurance rates. So not only should certification help you get uh, coverage for certification and maintain your coverage, sorry, coverage for cyber insurance and maintain this coverage, but it also can provide you with a discount off of the standard rates. So for more information on that, you can go to our website, cybernb.ca forward slash trust compliance, and uh, you'll see a section for Hub International. So uh, also, uh, the federal government is launching e-learning modules that will support um, Cyber Secure Canada, and it will help you uh, understand what the control requirements are and provide guidance on uh, implementing them. And uh, again, this is going to be a free offering from the federal government. It's not going to be in charge for this, and it should help everyone understand the requirements for the certification. So, Cybersecurity Canada has currently has four accredited certification bodies, and they include Bulletproof Solutions, Cybersecurity Canada, Source Tech IT, and Cyber Sorry, Watsec Cyber Risk Management. So, uh, unfortunately, Watsec wasn't able to attend today. However, I will be uh, presenting their slides on their behalf. But we will be starting with uh, Bulletproof. So. I will find Brian here, just one second. Brian? Brian, can you hear me? I can now. Yeah, there was a whatever you might have done there. It caused the caused my screen to ask me about accessibility options. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Uh, so I'll let you uh, introduce yourself and talk about your slides here. Just whenever you're ready, just tell me next slide. 
Sure. So good day, everybody. So my name is Brian Ronan. I'm the practice lead for risk and compliance services with Bulletproof Solutions. Um, so a little, just a little bit about us. Uh, as you can see here, we've uh, we've been in the in the industry now for 20 years. Uh, we have 13 locations um, across Canada and the U.S. as well as some in Europe. Um, we have uh, users on six continents, and we have a, a state-of-the-art uh, SOC in place uh, in New Brunswick uh, for uh, alerting, monitoring, and, and other managed services that we provide. So now, uh, to speak specifically to Cybersecure Canada. The services that we do offer, we have a consultation side. So we do provide consultation uh, as well as uh, you know, assistance with implementation. Um, we also perform gap assessments or gap audits prior to your certification audit to give you more of an idea of you know, where you might need some help or, or where things need to be shored up a little bit. We offer vulnerability scanning uh, and penetration testing, but there is a component within the Cybersecure Canada um, mandate around uh, having your website's OWASP top 10 tested. So that is something that we can offer, even if we are not uh, you know, your selection for the certification body. We do offer managed services as well, such as virtual CISO services, or if there's uh, you know, some components that uh, you're not capable or, or you don't have the skill set to do, um, or that you'd like to farm out, uh, that's something that we could do. And then of course, uh, certification services as well. You can jump to the next slide there, Brendan, if you wish. And so here uh, is just a little bit more about the, the two separate groups. We do remain uh, independent of each other, uh, and that's, that's part of our requirement for this. It's how we can remain uh, objective in the certification side. So on our consulting side, you know, we, we employ, you know, we have experienced security professionals. Um, our implementation experience is around uh, the NIST side, ISO 27001, as well as uh, other components within security and best practices. So uh, whatever your needs are, there, there's we have people who can help you with that. Uh, as I mentioned, we have virtual CISO services, if that's something that you're looking for. And our exposure to security standards, uh, we just listed a few here. We had Cybersecure Canada, uh, its early predecessor, Cyber Essentials as well. Um, we are a certification body for ISO 27001, uh, 27701 which if you're not familiar with that, that is the privacy information management system component that ties in with 27001. So that's uh, maps directly to GDPR. We also have exposure with uh, NIST 853, the cybersecurity framework, uh, WLASCS, if you were in the, the gaming industry, uh, and as well uh, with CMMC. And we've just recently been um, accepted by the CMM CMMCAB as a registered um, provider organization. So we have um, practitioners who are allowed to provide uh, non-certification services, so essentially co consultation services within the CMMC realm. Um, so that's, that's just recently uh, awarded to us. We have certified penetration testers, so, so you can be sure that you know the people doing it are, are exposed to um, the various aspects of penetration testing, whether it just be um, online related, if it's uh, com commerce related, if it's uh, handheld mobile app related, we have we have those people as well. And again, as I mentioned, managed services or our security operations center, as well as uh, Bulletproof 365, which is a security suite that makes use of um, Office like the Microsoft 365 realm, as well as Azure. And then just real quickly on our certification group, uh, we we employ certified management system auditors, so people who are proven to uh, be able to uh, audit management systems in accordance with 17,021. Uh, we have experience across a variety of different industries. Uh, we are a certification body for Cybersecure Canada, as well as uh, the, the two ISO standards there, WLA, and we are currently in progress of becoming a certification body for CMMC. Uh, we do note that currently, though, that would that process would remain in the USA right now. So when we do achieve that, if somebody was interested, 
uh, we would have to let you know that your data would cross borders uh, for the assessors in the United States to be able to see it. Uh, we also offer independent internal audit services, gap assessments across a variety of standards. Uh, we also do compliance-based audits and threat risk assessments. So that's essentially who we are. Um, and again, with Cybersecure Canada, we've been working with Brendan um, for a number of years uh, on the various items, as well as the other certification bodies we interact with. So uh, we can provide those certification services for you. Um, and again, if there's any questions afterwards, feel free to, to ask or, or to reach out. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. Uh, so up next would be uh, Cybersecurity Canada. They're also a certification body under the program. And I believe it'll be Colleen that'll be talking today. So uh, Colleen, if you can unmute. Hi, Brendan. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks, Brendan, for the introduction. Um, as Brendan said, my name is Colleen Burke, and I am with Cybersecurity Canada. So we are one of the four certification bodies for Cybersecure Canada certification. Um, basically, um, what we try to do is make sure that, um, you know, our staff and employees um, and everybody that's involved in the certification management systems fully understands the importance of impartiality and uh, in undertaking its certification activities. So um, essentially certification is all we do at Cybersecure Canada, Cybersecurity Canada. Um, we also, um, like Brian at Bulletproof, um, are ISO um, qualified to do certifications for ISO as well. Um, we also do gap assessments as well as um, threat risk um, assessments. In addition to that, we do uh, compliance-based audits as well. Um, Brendan, if you want to go to the next slide, that would be great. So basically what we do uh, in a nutshell is uh, what's on the screen in front of you now. So we provide guidance on a discovery process. Um, so we help to create a roadmap based on gap analysis and then obtain the organization's current uh, security posture and work from there with them. Um, moving forward from that, obviously policy creation uh, that is in line with the standards for Cybersecurity Canada uh, is a top priority for us. Um, we also offer cybersecurity training and we give recommendations based on the roadmap um, that we create with our clients. So we basically focus mainly on the certification uh, aspect and we have um, two groups of individuals as well. So we have our auditors and then we also have uh, practitioners that we work with um, so that there's no conflict of interest. Our practitioners uh, also um, have a separate or a separate entity within our organization. Uh, so what we do is we reach out, um, we talk to organizations promoting the program and in English and in French, of course, and then we sort of walk them through um, why they should have Cybersecure Canada certification, what the importance is, and um, basically talk to them about that and get them up and uh, running and going through certification with us. So. Yeah, we've been in business, I guess I should tell you that too, for about 21 years. And um, we also have organizations that we work with in South America and some European countries, uh, as well as Canada. And as I said, we do have um, French individuals that work with us as well. So um, we do business, a fair amount of business in Quebec as well. So yeah, I'll be happy to answer any questions um, if anybody has any at the end of the uh, presentation today. Thanks so much, Brendan. Perfect. Thank you, Colleen. So uh, up next, it would have it would have been uh, Watsek uh, presenting on their own, but um, as they had a last minute uh, conflict, I will be presenting on the behalf of uh, Watsek Cyber Risk Management. So I'll, I'll dive right in. So you'll see Doug Blakey there. He's the uh, president and CEO of Watsek, and he was going to attend, but he had a last minute conflict. So they were founded in 2009. Uh, they're based in Waterloo, Ontario. Um, they're specialists in small and medium enterprise cyber risk uh, management. Uh, the expertise are in certification for CMMC, ISO 27000, NIST, Cybersecure Canada, and supply chain requirements. And they have clients across Canada and the US. 
So Cybersecurity Canada, and they also are, of course, a Cybersecurity Canada accredited certification body. And what do they do? Well, uh, they provide privacy audits, uh, MFIPPA, BIPIDA, GDPR, etc. Uh, cyber risk assessment programs establish and manage for, uh, establish and management for clients, and they are a certification body for Cybersecurity Canada program. And they also provide a cyber risk education program for security practitioners and Cybersecurity Canada clients being certified. And cyber risk underwriting. Uh, so WASEC works with insurers to establish client risk exposure uh, in order to help them get cyber security insurance. So that's uh, about it for cybersecurity, or sorry, for, for WASEC cyber risk management. I will now ask Raj to unmute. Um, Raj is uh, the C CEO of SourceTech IT, and he'll be presenting on the last uh, certification body, uh, what they do, and then we'll do the draw for the uh, $50 gift card, and then we'll have uh, questions and answers at the end. Arash? Hi. Thank you, Brandon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are, again, very excited to see Brandon's uh, portal. Uh, I think it works very well uh, for all the, all the clients who are interested in Cybersecure Canada program. Again, a uh, little bit more about source tech IT. I think that'll be next next slide. Uh, we are we are also a managed service uh, security service organization with a full breed of uh, security tools um, capable in to the not just cybersecurity kind of program we can also do the iso level certification test and uh, quite familiar with SOC framework and working with uh, internal cpas to get them to SOC uh, one two or three level credentials and our in-house lab is uh, well equipped to work with uh, any security incidents or forensics that uh, our, uh, our end customers needed. Definitely Cybersecure Canada program, we're very excited. Uh, and definitely with the portal now, we'll uh, bring everybody to the next level. Uh, to, to help organization, I think, uh, you know, we can also perform the gap assessment that, uh, which we see is sort of a necessity at this point because not everybody finds themselves ready for an, for an audit, uh, you know, right away. So that's uh, that's been a, a great um, program internally for us that is work, working very well. Uh, where customers coming back to say, you know, are they ready or can they do it or not? The question ask session um, it does a lot for them, and that has worked very well. And we have our security operations center that's uh, well capable of, uh, I think uh, it probably a next slide, in, integrates very well with any uh, application or existing security tool that you might have to bring them on to the, to the next level uh, to, uh, to make sure uh, we can produce a gap assessment level report uh, or security gap assessment report for any organization. Uh, from from that perspective, I think do we have a slide, uh, Brandon? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so I mean, uh, we'll be here to answer any questions that you guys uh, might have around security, security tools, uh, and of course, cybersecurity kind of program. Uh, you know, if you're anybody struggling with. Thank you. Thanks, Raj. All right, so I'll just pop onto the next slide here. So as you can see, um, this is the contact information for each of the respective uh, certification bodies. Uh, if you wanted to contact them to get more information, uh, ask some questions, or get started with the certification process, um, this is a quick and easy way to do so. Um, we do we do have a questions and answers section here now. Obviously, uh, WhatsApp won't be able to answer any questions, but if you have any questions for uh, Source Tech IT, Cybersecurity Canada, or Bulletproof Solutions, uh, or just general questions about the program, uh, feel free to ask now, and uh, we'll we'll answer them as best we can. And um, and we'll also do the draw. So, is there any questions for uh, our certification bodies today? 
Yeah, hi, uh, this is Sam Bell um, from uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Got a question for you all. This is the first exposure I'm having to Cybersecure Canada. And I'm kind of curious how similar the framework is to uh, maybe uh, what we have in the US around NIST 800-171 or uh, 853, just trying to get an idea of, in terms of the overall rigor and structure, um, you know, what other framework do you think it's most similar to that I might be exposed to down here in the U.S.? That's a great question. Is, uh, is there a certification body that would like to take that one? Kirk? Hey, Brendan, it's Brian from Bulletproof. Um, I would say to be honest, I would say between between the ones you've mentioned, I would say the closest that I would akin them to would be um, if you actually be more of the CMMC ML1, so a maturity level of one. The the NIST 171 um, and NIST 853, the way those are also developed, there's a little bit more rigor in the requirements that you have to have in terms of uh, controls and, and in terms of what you're doing, um, especially where they break, break them out with the low, moderate, high level of risk. This particular standard, where it's really aimed for the small to medium organization, is focusing on almost the approach of uh, let's tackle 80% of the risk with 20% of the effort. So it's really looking at those big bucket items that you can fix quickly with simple solutions. Because again, um, those uh, small organizations that have five or six people in them are not going to have the same capital and experience or IT capability as say somebody with 250 people in their organization. So in terms of rigor, I would say it's definitely not as rigorous. Um, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's, it's, you'd have to look at it as whether this is going to be fit for purpose for you. Um, again, it, it's focusing on big bucket items like saying we have a, a reasonable incident response plan in place. We have good control over our logical access. We have controls on our data. We have good perimeter controls like firewalls. We have, um, good security awareness for our people. Our, our people are aware of what they should do, what they shouldn't do. We've loaded antivirus on our machines. We try to keep BYOD to a minimum, if at all, or if we have to put it in place, then we have controls. And it's it's really a little bit more, I find, on educating uh, good security uh, hygiene, rather than taking the 853 approach, which is uh, great hygiene, but a little bit more maturity and having Heart, I wouldn't, don't want to say harsher, but more more rigor put into your control environment. I guess that would, in my opinion, that would be the best way to describe it. And I, I mean, by all means, somebody else can 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 voice something yeah, think, as well. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And it also it's it's important to note that this is a one level uh, certification, and it's all self attestation with evidence. So there's no uh, there's no testing on site testing anything like that. Um, and again, only one level. So with CMMC, where there are several levels of certification that fit different size uh, organizations and different uh, risk profiles, this certification is designed for small and medium businesses, and it just has that one level. So is the documentation requirement lower um, as a result? You know, with the with the CMMC level one, uh, you know, you don't have to have policies, procedures, and plans for every one of the domains. Uh, like you would for say a CMMC level three um, with cyber uh, with uh, Cybersecure Canada, is it the same thing? Is it um, as long as you're observing the practices in place, then um, you're going to be able to pass the assessment, or are you are you looking for a little more rigor around the uh, around the documentation space? Just trying to understand because obviously 171 was all self attestation and. CMMC went, you know, very much towards you must have it written down at least for level three, and also be able to demonstrate it. So just trying to understand what that looks like. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I can answer that, it's Victor. Um, yeah, we are looking for policies and evidence, so it is a policy-based uh, certification. And uh, another difference between the the NIST and cybersecure is NIST is protecting data 
whereas uh, cyber secure is protecting the organization. And that's uh, a good difference between the two. Yeah, that, that's a really excellent point. And I have to agree with you there. Uh, uh, the NIST is definitely, certainly for 171, all focused around the data uh, as opposed to the entire enterprise. Yeah, I just want to make a comment. Uh, the email address is uh, .com for Cybersecurity Canada, not .ca. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. And uh, another thing is uh, we're doing a bit of a rewrite on the, uh, the actual uh, certification, and we are seriously looking at uh, different levels to make it uh, um, a well, we're not sure exactly how it's going to work, but we are talking about uh, rewriting different levels into the program. And can you elaborate on that a little bit more, Victor, on, on who we would be in that situation? Uh, it's the, uh, now the drafting committee is going to be redrafting. So I'm involved in the drafting committee. And then once uh, we have our draft of uh, the new version, um, then it goes to the technical committee, and then we fight it out at that point um, how yeah. it's going to work. But the, the public recommendations were to have, um, you know, potentially different levels. Great. All right. So, uh, is there any other questions today? Crickets. All right. So uh, we did have a uh, winner for the $50 Visa gift card today. Uh, I'll just say the first initial and the last name. Uh, the first initial is D and the last name is Lackey. So I will uh, contact that individual directly and we'll get that uh, $50 gift card sent out. Um, if there's no further questions, I guess we can uh, close the call a little earlier and uh, and go from there. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining and thank you uh, to all the certification bodies that were able to participate today. Uh, have a great day. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon.